Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera. We hope that you are staying safe and keeping healthy. We have a super, super easy recipe for you to make bread today. I can't even believe that it's taking a pandemic for me to finally try making bread at home. This is so simple, seriously. If you blink, you're gonna miss it, so pay attention. There are a lot of no-need breads out there, but of course, I have to find one that's super simple that I can make, and so I can recommend it for you to make because it's so easy, I can't even, I can't even tell you. And the results are amazing. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see some of the Instagram stories that we posted from making the bread earlier this week. And I just have to share it with you. I'm using Joe Cook's recipe. It uses four ingredients and that's it. So I'm starting off with three cups of flour. This is just plain white flour. I am adding one and three quarter teaspoons of kosher salt. I'm not sure what Joe recommends, but I prefer the kosher. I'm using a half teaspoon here. So three, one and three quarter teaspoon salt and half a teaspoon of active yeast. So I've had this yeast in my cupboard for a while. It hasn't expired yet, but I've been wanting to make bread for so long. I finally decided, you know what? If I buy the yeast, maybe I'll make it. Well, that didn't happen until now. And that's it. Then we are going to use one and a half cups of room temperature water. And you're just gonna pour it in there. I probably should have mixed all the stuff around first, but I got too excited. Just make sure you mix it really well. So this will be proof that it is indeed yeah. proof proof. <laughs> because I think I was supposed to mix the yeast and the salt and the flour together first, then add the water. So hopefully this will be okay. And it's supposed to be a sticky dough, which it is very sticky. You know, I don't even think it's sticky enough, so I'm gonna add a little bit more water. To start off with adding about a tablespoon of water. When you're adding more water, you don't wanna to add too much. And I'm using this porcelain bowl because the other day I used a metal bowl, like a stainless steel bowl, and I found that it was super, super sticky, so I'm hoping that this bowl will help with a little bit of that. Still a lot of dried flour down here, and it's not as sticky as it was the other day, so I'm gonna keep adding a little bit of water to get the right texture. And that's it making sure that there's no lumps of flour just kind of hanging out. All right, so this is what the dough looks like. It's kind of moist and sticky, and that's what you want. And I'm going to cover it with a piece of plastic wrap. And we're going to let this sit on the counter, not, on, not in a fridge, for 12 to 18 hours. So we're making this dough tonight, and we will come back in the morning and bake it and you will see how gorgeous and yummy it is. Good morning. I can't believe how much this bread actually rose. Um, last time I made it, I ma made it in a stainless steel bowl and maybe the bowl was too cold, I don't know. But in any case, look at how much it's grown. So cool. It's alive. <laughs> So we're just gonna remove this plastic wrap. Lots of uh, air bubbles in there, right? Eh? Yeah. So I said the yeast going. So I watched a, one video where they said that you could actually take a piece of this dough and like keep it to make another batch instead if you didn't have enough yeast. Kind of like. I want to say like um, Amish friendship bread. I once received a recipe 
or someone gave me some dough that apparently I was supposed to keep part of it in the freezer and then make bread with the rest. Well, I didn't do- What did you call it, a starter? Yeah, like a starter. So I guess just like yogurt, you need a starter to make yogurt. And so if you keep a little bit of yogurt from your previous batch, you can make it with the next batch. And I guess that's the same with bread, that if you keep a piece of the fermented yeast, I guess, I don't know, should I say that? I don't even know what I'm talking about because I don't know how to make bread. But my understanding is that if you keep a piece of the dough that has the yeast in it, it will grow in the next batch and make bread that way. But what do I know? Okay, so I'm gonna sprinkle some uh, flour on top. And we're supposed to be able to shape this into a ball. So it's super sticky and I'm not sure how I'm gonna form it into a ball because the last time I tried, it didn't really work out and I ended up just dumping the dough into my pot which, I don't know, turned out okay still. So that's why I think it's not very hard to do. So I'm just trying to get it off the edge of my bowl. And this flour kind of helps me to keep it from sticking too badly. All right, see how it's starting to form a ball. Just need a little bit more flour. Okay, I think this is working. All right, I'm gonna get our pot and then I'll talk our way through the rest of it. I preheated the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and I put my Dutch oven in there as well to preheat so this is piping hot right now along with the lid and you want to be able to use a pot that is fully oven proof including the handles. If you have handles that have plastic handles that can't go into the oven that is not a good idea because you're, you're, well they will melt. So make sure that the pot you're using is completely oven safe including the lid. So my Le Creuset um, is fully oven proof and even though the knob is black and looks plastic, it's not. It will be fine in the oven. So, and I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour into the bottom of my pot, so that will prevent it from sticking. And I've seen people use um, parchment paper and just put their, their ball of bread or dough on the parchment paper and put it in the pot together so you can just pull it out. But, you know, so this is where... This is where sure. you can't be bothered. Bro. I can't be bothered. How? How do I form this into a ball? I don't understand. So what I'm gonna do is just pour it into the pot. Let's see if you can see. So it's kind of ball-like. Yeah, there you go. All right. That's the best I'm gonna do. Okay, we're gonna put the lid back on, but my hands are messy, so I gotta wash my hands first, put the lid on, and then put it in the oven for half an hour with the lid on, and that is supposed to like steam um, the bread, and then we're gonna take the lid off for the last 15 to 20 minutes of baking, and that will brown the crust. Can't wait. Wow, looks good. All right, I'm gonna dump it onto my board. Make sure the bread doesn't actually roll off the board. And it should come out easily if you had enough flour at the bottom, which it does. All right, so I think it's a little bit flat today because I think maybe the dough was too wet. That's my guess. So it's spread out a little bit more. I think it's still okay. We have to wait for it to cool before we do the taste. Maybe 20 minutes. We'll check back. Sorry guys, the mic wasn't on when we filmed that. So I cut into it already. It's quite crusty on the outside. And I, you know, it's not actually a very pretty looking loaf of bread, 
but dude will do a much better job describing the bread. So I will let you all get ready for. Mmm, -hmm. mm, the taste. Just wondering how long this stay at home thing is gonna keep going for because first world problems of no, not getting a haircut. <laughs> really, all the product in the world cannot fix what's going on under here. The taste. Do you see that springiness? It's nice. You've been doing research and then this has been the time to dive into trying out new things. So if you guys haven't been following along, Flo has been doing um, some BTS stuff on Instagram stories. So check that out. Here we go. I'm gonna cut a smaller piece here. Look at those knife skills. And it's quite crusty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. It's not just the, the crust that's nice and, and crusty. The inside of the bread is springy and kind of sourdough-ish without the uh, sourdough taste. So I'm really impressed by the way the bread turns out. More importantly, how it tastes. Oh, I think that's too much butter. Oh, just slather it all over the then. Do you even uh, know how to use a butter knife? Yeah, I do. It's totally, can you see? I'm rocking this thing. Whoa, having that salted butter. So nice, so nice. I'm looking forward to it being a regular part of the rotation here in uh, the Lum household. Thanks, dude. You've got the time? To do different things, you gotta try this out. This will definitely be a part of our simple, ordinary, and joyful household. And for more easy recipes during this time, I'll see you over there. Be kind, stay safe.